and welcome everyone to the Circle Debate Top Five Picks of the Week here at Circle Debate Podcast. Of course, Social TV is what I've see here with my family, mis hermanos, the faction, the D-Generation West, the horsemen. Man, we are everywhere. We are the elite of podcasting. That's what we are. Ha ha! We're the elite of podcasting. Of course, I am with the Mr. Mr. 69, because he is 69, because he gives you the 69 reasons, the 69 questions, and the 69 answers, just to let you know that he is here with 69 actual facts, Mr. M-G-C, Don Matthew Callis, Steamboat. I got 60, I got 69 reasons why. Ha 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 ha. Right. And of course, we have the individual who lives a thousand nine hundred and seventy-seven thousand miles from Winnipeg, Minnesota, Canada. I'm not going that far because he is the undefeated, the undisputed, the unmatched, the unrivaled, and the uncensored. The god of podcasting money. By God, Mike Lopez. That's right. Man, here we go. Ready for this list. I'm looking forward to it. And this is a tough list for our top five today, ladies and gentlemen. As today, we are doing top five best women's matches. Yes, there you go. Women's matches. You can see it. There it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see it. Yeah. But yes, it's a difficult... Difficult task to do this list, but let's go to the wheel and see who goes first on the women's matches. So let me go ahead and pull up the wheel here. Let's see. Uh, no, that's not that it. Okay. There we go. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And this is brought to you by Dove. Be kind to your skin with the moist skin kind deodorant. <laughs> this skin doesn't get soft by itself, you know. <laughs> nope. No, it doesn't. And Matt Callis has six, nine reasons why. <laughs> Countless reasons. <laughs> and there you have it. Mr. 69. And let's take it away. It's been wanting me to go first for a minute. <laughs> so, <laughs> like a while, a while now. So, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to kick it off my number 5 with with this one, very recent women's match, and this was a hair versus hair match. The loser had to shave their head in this women's match. This happened over this. Uh, this actually happened uh, the Stardom All Star Dream Cinderella at the Budokan in Tokyo. Big time. It was a big one of the biggest shows for Stardom. You know, and it would have had more people if it wasn't for you know the pandemic. Sadly, you know, so so it had its limits. And this match was between. Julia and Tam Nakano for for the of course wonder of stardom championship which is like the intercontinental title of stardom and there were this match was actually pretty brutal there was tiger drivers there was you know tiger drivers through a table you know just a lot of brutal stuff and the funny thing is this match you know it ended with Tom Nakano shaving Julia's head while crying. And Julia's like, I don't care, shave my head. I'll shave it myself since you're too busy crying. <laughs> so it's kind of like a, I don't know if any that's happened in a in a hair versus hair match where it's just like, ah, fine, I'll do it myself. For God's sake. <laughs> she took the clippers to her own head, you know. So she went with a crew cut first and then she went full ball. But it was it was a very brutal match. And, it was great with the storytelling. Number four, I'm gonna go to Stardom again, and we got Io Shirai versus 
the alpha female for the World of Stardom Championship, which is their top title. Now, the alpha female, you know, her, her real name is Marie Kristen Gilbert. She's from Germany. She's very, very tall, powerful woman, much taller than Io Shirai. And it was just crazy watching her chop down that giant, you know. It's like your whole Undertaker versus, once again, it's that Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels psychology that you have to that match, big and small. And you have, and you do a lot of cool things with it. And Io Shirai finishes her off with a really crazy kick to the head. You know, she was doing a lot more kicks back then. So that's my, that's my number four. All right, so my number three, that's going to be Maki Ito and Miyu Yamashita, a tag team match versus Neo Bishikigun, which is like the Beauty Awareness Society. And that is where Saki Sama and Mei Suruga are like, they're like French maids, you know? Yeah. Mei Suruga's like a French maid, and then Saki Sama's like a French queen. And they hit either Maki Ito or Miyu Yamashita over the head with a dish, like a, a dish tray for like champagne, <laughs> like a like a like a drink tray, just because she's like a she's like a maid servant and goes bang over the head. And there was a lot of interesting things going on with that match, you know. And they actually go on to become the tag team champions. So it's like the semifinals is what that match was. So it was, it was pretty cool. And then Makito, that was actually the match Makito had right before she jumped on the plane to go to the United States for revolution. That's so. awesome. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. My number two, Makito versus Miski. That was her tag two. team partner, right? Mm-hmm, that was her tag team partner. That Part two, right? Part two, the revenge match against her. And there was a lot of crying and screaming at the end. It was kind of like clo the closing chapter on that long rivalry. Yes. It was built up over probably almost two years, you know. And Maki Ito looked different back then. So it was way a, different. The, You're absolutely right. Yeah. The grudge match, Maki Ito versus Miski. Miski has a lot of similarities with um, looks wise and move wise with, with Riho. Yeah. And one of the major differences with Mizuki is like, you know, she's more like happy. Riho in, in Tokyo Joshi Pro, she's like an aristocrat. You know, she's like, she has great pedigree for, for wrestling. So she's seen as like on a whole other level than a lot of the other girls there. All right. My number one, Gail Kim versus Awesome Kong in Impact. You're the man. You're the man. This is that right. Woo! That's like, uh, and once again, a lot of people compared that to Vader versus Shawn Michaels, psychology-wise. You know what? You are absolutely on point. Because that match itself was strategically similar to that match. So let the people know, Mr. 69, why they should compare those matches. And, and I'll... I'll all of the all of the different moments, you know, big and small, you know, like you got the the baby face who's fast and, and skinnier, and then you have the big powerful heel in the role of Awesome Kong using all of her strength and all of her power against Gail Kim. So that that's why that gets my number one. I gotta say that that I'm very sad to hear Awesome Kong is retiring. You know, I, it feels like just yesterday that I saw her surprise us all at double or nothing ever I, I remember i was there at double or nothing and i remember how big the pop was you know it was like former impact women's champion awesome kong so the, there you go that's my uh that's my number one pick i got two honorable mentions oh wow so my first honorable mention is aha kong versus manami toyota in the Tokyo mm. Dome in 1994 in the Tokyo Dome. That's a big deal. You know, Aha Kong came to the ring with Judas Priest's song, uh, Electric Eye, which is the first song on the Screaming for Hip for Vengeance album. 
you know, yeah, yeah, and Aha Kong just slowly walks to the ring, and all of the Tokyo Dome is just blasting it, and she just gets in that brutal match with Manami Toyota. All right, my number one honorable mention: Megumi Kudo versus Shark Chushia in an exploding barbed wire death match. And in that match, Megumi Kudo's head gets set on fire for a few seconds. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, like you look at Megumi Kudo and you wouldn't expect something that insane. But you know, if you if you want a good exploding barbed wire death match, that's definitely one to watch. Lot of blood. Lot of blood. Lot of blood. A lot of blood. <laughs> Love it. And love fire it. and blood and fire and blood. <laughs> Megumi, once again, that's Megumi Kudo versus Shark Chushia. That's awesome. Love it. Awesome. I love it. Man, see, here's the goal debate. You learn. You learn. You know, You're going to learn, learn today. You're going to learn today. <laughs> Here was the God Amongst Insects of Podcasting. God Amongst Insects. Yes. He, he gives her you... head was on fire. <laughs> He's not like Kelso. Like, her head was on fire. Like, Kelso. On 70. fire. <laughs> I love it. Let's go to the wheel. See who is next between Money Mike and I. Let's see who goes. And brought to you by Target. Save 5%, get more every day. And save up of 150 on select lifestyle items on wow. Target Circle. Oh, you got to close my other one. And don't forget U.S. Bank. That's right. And don't forget also AMC. Oof. All right, oh, here we go. God. Let's, Let's do this. The God of Podcasting is going up next. All right. So... Man, many, many women's matches. Uh, there's so many good good ones there. Uh, number five, I'm going with the main event of WrestleMania 35, Ronda versus Be Becky versus Charlotte. Honestly, the anticipation uh, was, was there, you know? Um, yes, the argument could be made that it could have been fine without Charlotte. That's okay. But why not? Put her put her in there. She's, you know, very she was very or is very capable of being in the main event of WrestleMania. She's a flair, you know. Uh, so definitely uh, I enjoyed it. The only kind of uh downside to the match was the pin where or the finish where you know Ronda's Shoulders were clearly not on the on the mat. No, no pun intended, Matt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but that leaves the door open for you know a rematch or for the story to continue right away as soon as Ronda's ready to go, if she's ever ready to go. Yeah, uh, about so, that, buddy. Well, who knows at this point? <laughs> um, number four. Victoria versus Molly Holly, WrestleMania 20. And uh, uh, there, do you want to talk about hair versus hair? Mm. Man, uh, <laughs> it, I, I enjoyed watching this. And uh, yes, I guess it's, it, it, the match itself was decent, but the spectacle of it was the hair shaving, right? You had Victoria shaving Molly Holly. And then, uh, well, I mean, you got to keep going, right, until it's over. Uh, but the next match is coming. And what's the next match? Eddie Guerrero versus Kurt Angle. And we have Kurt Angle. Uh, I, I can't remember if he took a glance at them or something uh, as he was coming out. But, yes, Molly Holly was still getting her head shaved while Kurt Angle was making his entrance uh, on <laughs> WrestleMania. How crazy is that? Um, number three is a recent one, fairly recent to others in this list, and that is Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa unsanctioned. I, man, this, this right here, mm-hmm. I honestly feel like this catapulted Britt Baker to 
main event status to the point where she's, you know, seen as the face of the women's division in AEW. And she could easily, easily, if she chose to, transition over to WWE and has a name for herself already. You know, people would be excited to have her there too. And I feel like it's matches like these that put people on the map. Uh, and they did just that. On, and for both of them, for both Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker. Um, brutal, brutal stuff going on there. Uh, the shirt that was sold afterwards, it, it tells the story. You know, a bloody Britt Baker. It, it, it's almost reminiscent of, of, of Becky when she had her uh, bloody face t-shirt also. Uh, but yeah, so that's my number three. Number two is one that uh, I, I enjoy, you know, very much so. Uh, and it has been heavily censored, to be honest. And that is Trish Stratus versus Mickey James at WrestleMania 22. And yes, there is these moments where, you know, there's some grabbing and some licking Ooh. and, you know, Ooh. all that stuff. Woo! Right? Woo! Oh. <laughs> um, Excuse us. And uh, TVMA, but we're on. He's uncensored. I'm uncensored. Uh, completely. SoCal uncensored. Take, take, take it up with my manager if you got a problem with that. Hey, oh, here's a Fonzie. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I, I really just enjoy this match. The, and, and, and honestly, not just because of the, the raunchy stuff that went on uh, during the live broadcast, but. Stories like this are hard to come by nowadays, you know, uh, like stories that just fall in place. You know, I don't know what the, I don't know if it was the original plan all along to have uh, Mickey James versus Trish uh, at WrestleMania, but it shaped up to be that, you know, uh, she showed up, was the obsessed fan, months and months of build up, and we have this match, right? So, you know, it was great. My number one has to be, it is Sasha versus Bailey, Brooklyn takeover. Yes, it has to be that. My goodness. Um, I have not really watched NXT, but I, for whatever reason, I tuned in. I watched it at that point, and that really was like, whoa, you know, the women's revolution or, or evolution, whatever they called it is here and now yeah, i'd never seen such a match uh in wwe with the women involved in it you know um it was it was i dare i say groundbreaking you know at that point and um many many great matches have occurred since then uh but i feel like this was kind of like what catapulted things or or opened the door for um a lot of uh new ideas since then They've been in Hell in a Cell, or women in general, Hell in the Cells, Royal Rumbles, Elimination Chambers. Um, yeah, I feel like this match was kind of the start of, of such things. Um, not the movement itself, but in-ring stuff. So, for me at least. Mm. Um, two, two honorable mentions. First one being the first ever Women's Royal Rumble. Something I never thought ever was going to happen you know 30 women you know like how they were able to get legends and you know nxt roster um, competitors but it worked and it has worked to this day you know they, they it's both it's almost tradition now and, and honestly i feel it would feel empty if they don't have both Royal Rumbles, both women's and men's. Well, it looks so, like it's going that way because they let go a lot of women. So, yeah. I, that's unfortunate. I, I really, really hope that they're able to keep it going. But, you know, here's hoping. Because I, I honestly, I, I think it's just as entertaining as the men's. Um, and my second honorable mention just happened a few weeks ago. Uh, it was, it's Diana versus Melina at NWA Empower. Now, granted, and I did say this uh, on, on the Circle of Debate episode, there were some botches, but honestly, like, I, I don't know. I, there was just something about this match that I, I liked watching it. And um, I hadn't seen Melina in the ring in a while. 
Uh, Diana Perazzo is uh, is honestly is winning me over as as Impact Champion, with a uh, Knockouts Champion, um, and honestly, like I think it was a pretty cool match, and uh, I enjoyed watching it. So uh, I decided to put it in there too. You know what? This, that match was very emotional. It mm. wasn't even about the botches, just uh, just the emotional match itself between Melina and Diana. Yeah. Melina is her last chance to get some, especially a prestigious title, you mm-hmm. know, and she's underrated in my opinion. Nobody gives her the credit that she deserves. If you go back to her history, her matches, she's put pretty good matches in WWE during her tenure. I don't, you know, she did a great job, and I, I and I enjoyed her very, very much. And so, Agreed. yeah, cannot wait. Man, this, this was damn hard, man. <laughs> Fucking hard, but I'm going to try to make it. I'll do the best that I can. Number five. Lita versus Trish Stratus on Monday Night Raw when they first main evented. Mm. The first ever women's main event on a Raw television show. They made it happen. I think without those two women, none of that would have happened. At all. So, and I'm glad they created that pathway to that direction. Uh, and I'm happy for that, that they had done that, you know, like, and given the time, I think the match itself was like 11 minutes, 12 minutes, I think the most tops are close to 15. And I'm happy. And this is, you know, almost breaking her neck to that suicide dive, you know, like, Jesus. Cool was, that you, what, was that what it broke her neck or, or led her to the time off? No. No. Okay. She was close to but no, that wasn't one. She came back from a broken neck injury from that. Yeah. And then she went through that. She held her neck like, oh, shit. She hurt. It re-injured it. Everybody was scared. Yeah. The way how she bended. I was like, ah, shit. Mm. Number four. Number four. And this is a stardom one because I, now I remember. And it's Yutami Hayashija versus Micah. That was a recent one. I actually did enjoy that one because Micah is a very underrated, underrated top star that it's barely getting there in stardom. And Matt can tell you, uh, if you want to give the people the knowledge of Micah very briefly, of uh, her underrated talent and also Yutami, because they put on uh, an emotional match. If you go back Yutami and look is at the it, current, yes. Yutami's the current champ. Yes. But what... Uh, emotional match though. If you go back and look at it, it was very emotional. I did enjoy that one. I ain't gonna lie. I did enjoy that. One. That one I did enjoy. Oh, this is tough. Number three. It will be Charlotte Flair versus Natalia on the first ever NXT take. For the women's championship, when Ric Flair was on her side, and Bret Hart was on the top, of I think they created more the atmosphere for the women's revolution. Even you know they already created it before, like with Mickey James, with Trish, Lita, Jacqueline, Victoria, all you know, Jazz, Molly Holly. But I feel that it finally caught eyes on this brand. Uh, and it finally did. Like, well, Paige and AJ Lee, they did too. They were the last ones, you know, then before, you know, it started regrowing. But this match was enjoyable. Technician at his best. And this took out the best of Charlotte, in my opinion, to be where she's at now. The, woo, the queen of professional wrestling. Mm. So that's my number three. My number two. That's a tough one. My number two would be Santina. No, not Santina. <laughs> My number two will be All In 2018. Tessa Blatchard, Madison Rain, Britt Baker, and Chelsea Green. When they made history, All In, Fatal Four Way, Random. And they made history. And it was incredible. There was a big pop for Tessa. 
Yes. Very big pop. A very big, big pop for that. And I enjoyed it very, very, very much. And I give them, you know, kudos for it. My number one. Of course, I do enjoy the Brooklyn one, but it's a tie. I have to put it at a tie. So, hmm. yes, yeah, Sasha and Bailey, the tie, NXT Brooklyn. The other one, for me, has to be Asuka and Sharp, WrestleMania. Hmm. I loved it. I enjoyed it because I loved Asuka, and it was the first time I was excited. I was like, yes! Are we going to see Asuka finally fucking end her streak? I was like, yes! But it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. I was disappointed. I was disappointed. Tough. Yeah, I did enjoy Yeah, I did enjoy it. Three honorable mentions. One will be Jazz versus Trish versus Lita. WrestleMania 17. I enjoyed it. 18. 18. Thank you. Oh, yeah, 18. Yeah, you're right. Shit, 18. Fuck, I, I was getting confused. You're right. 18. My apologies. 18. Uh, I did enjoy that match. It was not bad at all. Uh, and plus, Jazz walked out as a champ. I actually enjoyed it. Very, very uh, great moment for Jazz, too. Especially at Mania. Second honorable mention... Becky Lynch versus Asuka at the Royal Rumble. I think we, we, we got to see a lot of Becky technical style, mm. even though she lost, but I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. My last one, another one that I did enjoy that is, I think for me, my opinion was... Like, whoa, because we finally get to see the in more of this individual, and that is Ronda Rousey versus Sasha Banks at the Royal Rumble. That wasn't a most of the match. And I like how Sasha was like, for a horseman's bitch, it's still me. You know, it's, it's all about us. <laughs> I enjoyed it. This list this, this, this was hard for me. I know people are going to give me shit about it. I'm missing Gail Kim versus Nick James and TNA. Uh, there's so much I'm missing with my like, shit. But this list was a difficult one. So, now let's go to the Wheel of Pits to see what are the next two that we're going to choose. So let me get my wheel here. I haven't, I haven't been on enough of the worst ones. Those are always so fun. I know, right? Let's let the wheel speak. The wheel knows all. It the wheel all. will know it all. Here we go. Spin that, that wheel. Come on, worst injuries. Uh, oh, best botchmania. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Okay. They're e- they're eating her. Then they're going to eat me. Now let's oh, go to another God. super dragon. <laughs> Alright, come on. Uh weapons that independent tag team that should be signed. Ooh. I like That's that. That's interesting. Huh. That should be interesting. We got a, we got a sidewinder. The bodega. The bodega. Sorry, guys. Okay. We'll do one more to see which is the last one. All right. Here we go. Money CW. Dang. Oh. <laughs> Damn. I got my homework to do on that one. You got a lot of homework to do on that one. I got some great recommendations. <laughs> we'll do one Actually, more. Actually, I have seen a few. Actually. We'll do one more because I want to have an angle Tanahashi, right? Mike. I've been telling you. Oh, best yes. weapons. 
Yes. That one, yeah. I'm looking forward to that one. Yes. Very habit is in each Moppy for the win. <laughs> I knew <laughs> I'll snow if you're watching this, you're gonna enjoy the best weapons. <laughs> Hold on, I'll snow. Perry Saturn. Perry Saturn. Perry Saturn is shit. Mafia. You're welcome. You're welcome, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in here on our top five picks of the weeks. You'll be seeing more of these coming up. Um, just remember, at the end of this video, subscribe, hit that like hit that subscribe button get your notification hit that ring bell get all your top fives all your weekly episodes and much much more content here on circle debate and of course to our other brothers from another mother's the league of extraordinary podcast as well follow their content as well so we will see you guys next time au revoir Mwah. good night goodbye and good night but Bang. i'm gonna let mr bang here at 69 the clothes, the show. We don't make podcasts. We make drinkable yogurt. Mm. That's right, baby. That's right, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you have it.